Interface management profiles are an important element when setting up layer tree interfaces, but what you should actually not use them for is managing the firewall. Why? I will explain you in a moment. If this is your first time here, I'm Lars von Consigas. We call ourselves the Palo Alto Networks Experts because the next generation firewall is our passion. It's what we do all day every day, migrating firewalls, providing managed services and most important, implementing security best practices. When I started to work with this box in 2010, barely anyone knew about Palo Alto Networks. But as an engineer, I felt that this solution will change the world of cybersecurity. And yes, today we know it did big time, because it's one of the few security solutions that can truly secure your network. However, there's a caveat. You need to set it up in the right way in order to be effective. Because while it's awesome, it's not a magic box. So over the years we became a professional service partner for Palo Alto Networks, as well as one of a few elite authorized training centers. And with working in the field for so many years and being a trainer, I would like to share my experience with you. So over the next couple of weeks and months, we release new videos and core concepts explaining the fundamental workings of the next generation firewall, starting with the trend landscape, then deployment methods, NAT, AppID, SSL decryption, VPNs, and many more. So follow us on LinkedIn, YouTube, or Twitter to stay up to date. But now let's have a look at interface management profiles. With an interface management profile, we are enabling services that are provided by the IP address of the firewall's interface itself. So for instance, let's say on the inside, we have a client with the IP address 192.168.17.50. And then our firewall has the, inter has the IP address 192.168.17.1. So now the firewall is kind of a default gateway of this internal client. And if the internal client, let's say, sends traffic to the internet, means the destination IP address of the traffic is somewhere on the internet, well, then it uses the firewall as a next stop. The firewall is routing the traffic out to the internet, and that's it. But what about if now, you know, this client sends, for instance, a ping to the firewall itself. So a ping sent to 192.168.17.1, so the firewall's interface IP address. Well, in this case, um, this is where the interface management profile kicks in because now we can basically with this decide what specific services do we want to allow on this interface. So for instance, a ping, uh, we can also actually enable management, so SSH or HTTPS on the interface. Uh, response pages are a very important one, so that, for instance, you know, when the client goes out to, to the internet, this interface needs to kind of present a response page to the client, um, showing him no, you know, uh, this traffic is not allowed. Okay. So in all of kind of these services, we we do allow with using the interface management profile. What is important to take into account, however, is that the security policy is still kicking in, actually before the interface management profile, okay? Meaning, you know, you have traffic, and again, here we have uh, the ping, right, going there. And before this ping reaches the IP address of the, of the forward interface, it first will be checked against the security policy. However, you know, if you look at the setup, for instance, you know, doing ping to this IP address, obviously that's traffic from the office zone to the office zone because obviously the IP address of the interface itself is also inside the office zone. So here this is now intra-zone traffic, right, which as you know uh, by default is allowed, right. So in most circumstances, you know, this traffic does not have to be explicitly allowed by the security policy, but the security policy does check it. That's important, right? So meaning, for instance, if you block intra-zone traffic and you want to allow these pings, then you do need to explicitly allow them in your security policy. Looking at the best practices, usually I recommend to kind of set up three profiles, right? One being ping, which only allows ping. So a profile like this, you would, for instance, apply to your internet interface where you only allow ping and nothing else. Then ping and response pages. So here again, we allow the ping, but then also response pages, meaning, you know, if a client goes to a web page which is blocked, then the firewall can present him with a this response page, this blocking page, telling him, no, um, this is not allowed, okay? And then, also a management profile, but this one should only be used in very exceptional cases, okay? So here we obviously allow SSH and HTTPS to the firewall's own management interface, right? Um, but if we do this, we always should 
to find a permitted IP address. Now, a common use case for something like this would be, for instance, if you um, do an intervention, you can have a big change on the firewall remotely, on a, re on a kind of a firewall which is, let's say, on a remote site. And let's say normally you reach this firewall via a site to site VPN, so all good. But you want to keep yourself a little bit of a backdoor just in case something goes wrong with the change which you're doing. Okay, so you want uh, that you can access the firewall's management interface via the public IP address on the outside of the firewall, right? So in this case, you know, then you would apply such management profile um, to the outside interface, right? But again, very important, always to find a permitted IP address so that, you know, this management traffic is only allowed from very specific IP addresses um, for where you kind of uh, uh, put this in, right? Reason is very simple that, um, if you don't, well, then, you know, on the internet, people are scanning your public IP addresses all the time, right? If they see there's SSH or HTTPS available, you straight away will see some brute force attacks. Now, you might say, right, I have very solid, you know, username and passwords and not be able to kind of brute force their way into this that quickly. But what you need to take into account is that... Um, uh, every time there is a, an, an administrator login, there's a log written uh, on the firewall, and that's actually written to the root partition. So we had a, kind of seen a lot of cases where uh, a kind of a misconfiguration there uh, would have led for the root partition to run full and was just the firewall being, being crashing. Okay, so that's again something very important to take into account, both from an operations point of view of the firewall as well as from a security point of view. Okay, so just showing here you an example. Um, so on, on the outside internet interface, I only allow ping, nothing else. And then on all the internet uh, internal interfaces, I'm allowing ping and response pages, right? And then again, the management one, I would only use in very uh, specific circumstances um, when we kind of we need this and then only on a temporary basis. And by the way, if you're interested in security best practices for Palo Alto Networks, then check out the blog on our webpage. Here in the best practice section, you can download this worksheet with over 120 best practices for the next generation firewall. And very soon, we will also launch a security best practice training with a lot of videos explaining all of these security best practices in detail. So if you're interested, then sign up to our mailing list and we will let you know as soon as this free training is available.